Hey everyone, I'm MTS, aka Mel the Sciences. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today, I'm going to be looking at Wormholes Explained. So before I start the video, I just thought I would read out the actual definition of a wormhole and what its purpose is. <laughs> so a wormhole is a solution to the Einstein field equations for gravity that act as tunnels connecting points in space-time in such a way that the trip between the points through the wormhole could take much less time than the trip through normal space. Space. How that's even possible, I don't know. It is af after all hypothetical. <laughs> However, Curtis Kazat does always have quite entertaining and beautifully done videos and I just thought I should take a look anyway and see what they have to say and see if I understand it a little bit better. So without further ado, let's head into the video. If you saw a wormhole in reality, it would appear round, spherical, a bit like a black hole. Light from the other side passes through and gives you a window to a faraway place. Once crossed, the other side comes fully into view, with your old home now receding into that shimmering spherical window. But are wormholes real, or are they just magic disguised as physics and maths? <laughs> if they are real, how do they work, and where can we find them? <laughs> For most of human history, we thought space was pretty simple. A big flat stage where the events of the universe unfold. Mm -hmm. Even if you take down the They've used this analogy many times over and it doesn't get old. I actually like it. Set of planets and stars, there's still something left. That empty stage <laughs> is space and it exists, unchanging and eternal. Einstein's theory of relativity changed that. It says that space and time make up that stage together, and they aren't the same everywhere. The things on the stage can affect the stage itself, stretching and warping it. Mm. If the old stage was like unmoving hardwood, Einstein's stage is more like a waterbed. Mm -hmm. This kind of elastic space can be bent and maybe even torn and patched together, which could make wormholes possible. Okay. Let's see what that would look like in 2D. Our universe is like a big flat sheet. Bent in just the right way, wormholes could connect two very, very distant spots with a short bridge that you could cross almost instantaneously. Right, but then how do you bend? Travel the universe even faster than the speed of light. Right, so true. So where can we find a wormhole? Presently, only on paper. <laughs> General relativity says they might be possible, but that doesn't mean they have to exist. General relativity True. is a mathematical theory. It's a set of equations that have many possible answers, but not all maths describes reality. But mm -hmm. they are theoretically possible, and there are different kinds. The first kind of wormholes to be theorized were Einstein Rosen bridges. They describe every black hole as a sort of portal to an infinite parallel universe. Ooh. Let's try to picture them in 2D again. Well, we know Empty differently. Space time is flat, but curved by objects on it. If we compress that object, space time gets more curved around it. Eventually, space time <laughs> becomes so warped that it has no choice but to collapse into a black hole. A one way barrier forms, the event horizon, which anything can enter, but nothing can escape. Right. Trapped forever at the singularity, singularity. at its core. <laughs> but maybe there is no singularity here. One possibility is that the other side of the event horizon looks a bit like our universe again, but mirrored upside down, where time runs backwards. In our universe, mm. things fall into the black hole. In the parallel universe with backwards time, the mirror black hole is spewing things out a bit like a big bang. Right. This is called a white hole. Unfortunately, Einstein Rosen bridges can't actually be crossed. It takes an infinite amount of time to cross over to the opposite universe, and they crimp shut in the middle. If you go into a black hole, you won't become the stuff coming out of the white hole. Nope. You'll only become dead. Yep. <laughs> so, to travel the cosmos in the blink of an eye, humans need a different kind of wormhole, a traversable wormhole. Okay, might I say, I love this design, the, like the synth music type. 70s look we have going on here really cute 
80s. If string theory, or one of its variations, is the correct description of our universe, then we could be lucky, and our universe might even have a tangled web of countless wormholes already. Shortly after the Big Bang, quantum fluctuations in the universe at the smallest scales, far, far smaller than an atom, may have created mm. many, many traversable wormholes. Threaded through them are strings, called cosmic strings. In the first billionth of a trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, the ends of these tiny, tiny wormholes were pulled light years apart, scattering them through the universe. If wormholes were made in the early universe, whether with cosmic strings or some other way, they could be all over, just waiting to be discovered. One might even be closer than we realize. From the outside, black holes and wormholes can look very similar, leading some physicists to suggest the supermassive black holes in the center of galaxies are actually wormholes. I wouldn't it test would it though. It's hard to go all the way to the center of the Milky Way to find out though, but that's okay. There might be an equally extremely hard way to get our hands on a wormhole. We could try to make one. Okay. <laughs> Love to see that. To be traversable and useful, there are a few properties we want a wormhole to have. First, it must obviously connect two distant parts of space-time. Right. Like your bedroom and the bathroom. Right. Or Earth and Jupiter. Right. Second, it should not contain any event horizons, which would block two-way travel. Third, it should be sufficiently sized so that the gravitational forces don't <laughs> kill human travelers. <laughs> the biggest problem we have to solve is keeping our wormholes open. Yes. No matter how we make wormholes, gravity tries to close them. Gravity wants to pinch it closed and cut the bridge, leaving only black holes at the ends. Whether it's a traversable wormhole with both ends and ours, or a wormhole to another universe, it will try to close unless we have something propping it open. Right. For very old string theory wormholes, that's the cosmic string's job. For man-made wormholes, we need a new ingredient. Exotic matter. Uh? This isn't anything like we find on Earth, or even antimatter. It's something totally new and different and exciting, with crazy right. things like nothing that's ever been seen before. Exotic matter is stuff that has negative mass. Positive mass, like people and planets and everything else in the universe, negative is mass. attractive because of gravity. But negative mass would be repulsive. It would push you away. This makes a kind of anti-gravity that props open our wormholes. And exotic matter must exert enormous pressure to push space-time open, greater even than the pressure at the centers of neutron stars. With exotic matter, we could weave space-time however we see fit. We may even have a candidate for this exotic matter, the vacuum of space itself. Quantum fluctuations in empty space are constantly creating pairs of particles and antiparticles, only for them to be annihilated an instant later. Uh -huh. The vacuum of space is boiling with them, and we can already manipulate them to produce an effect similar to the negative mass we're looking for. What? We could use this to stabilize our wormholes. Once we're keeping it open, the ends would start together, so we'd have to move them around to interesting places. We could start by wiring the solar system, leaving one end of each wormhole in orbit around the Earth. We could fling others into deep space. The Earth could be a wormhole hub for a vast interstellar human civilization, spread over light years, but only a wormhole away. However, wormholes have a dark side. Even opening a single wormhole kind of breaks the universe in fundamental ways, yeah, definitely. creating time travel paradoxes and violating the causal structure of the universe. Definitely. Many scientists think that this not only means they should be impossible to make... Because technically you are time traveling. ...but that it's impossible for them to exist at all. So for now, we only know that wormholes exist in our hearts and on paper. They exist in our hearts. <laughs> we know you want to know more about universe stuff. Negative matter. A, a type of exotic matter whose mass is of opposite sign to the mass of normal. Well, duh. Such. Such matter would violate one or more energy conditions and show some strange properties such as the oppositely oriented acceleration for negative mass. 
It is used in certain speculative hypothetical technologies such as time travel to the past and future. Uh, and artificial wormholes which may also allow for time travel like I said. Can there be negative matter is the question. In the everyday world, when an object is pushed, it accelerates in the same direction as the force applied to it. This relationship is described by Isaac Newton's second law of motion, but in theory, matter can have negative mass in the same sense that an electric charge can be positive or negative. I mean, I mean, look, I'm biology per medicine. I'm not, I am not a physicist. I do not study any of these theories. So disclaimer on that. If these, these are my initial reactions. Negative matter could exist somewhere in the universe. Modern theories of matter and energy do not forbid its existence, but if negative matter were to exist, its behavior would be very strange. But just, it's, it's right, how strange would it be? Detailed analyses according to the known laws of physics show that the gravitational field of an object made of negative matter would cause all other objects, including those made of negative matter, to move away from it. While the gravitational field of an object made of positive matter will cause all other objects, including those made of negative matter, to move towards it. Hmm. If we take a ball of negative matter with a negative mass, minus m, and place it near a rocket ship with a positive mass of equal magnitude, the negative mass will repel the positive mass, while the positive mass will attract the negative mass. How is the negative mass going to repel the positive, yet the positive attract the negative? According to Newton's law, Newton's law of motion, the rocket ship and the ball of negative matter will go off in the same direction, with an acceleration equal to the force of gravity between them. A negative mass object repels a positive mass space vehicle, which attracts the negative object, so they move off together. This topic highly interests me because I'm I'm someone who's really going to try and <laughs> and clear up my confusion by any means. So I mean, this is my first time in hearing of negative matter, and it's <laughs> it's taking me on a, a mental trip right now, <laughs> which I guess is natural for the first time being introduced to it. But I'm obviously going to be doing more research on this. It's nighttime and my brain does not feel like working as well as it could. <laughs> Still, beautifully done video as always. That's why I, I watched it. Wormholes are cool, but pretty sure they're going to stay hypothetical for now. Also, I don't even want to imagine humanity being able to utilize wormholes. That's just going to be... <laughs> Either way, I had fun. And if you like this particular video, please drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would very, very much appreciate your support. Thank you so much for all you do and I will see you in the next video. Peace.